Hi, I'm Sadie Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Akata Losana. I'm from Butua and I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening Fiji, in this bulletin, alleged murder leaves Kambisi residents in shock. COVID-19, a job killer, says PM. And no threat from those who clear quarantine. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The residents of Kambisi and Singatoka are still coming to terms with the tragic incident that occurred yesterday in the area. A 53-year-old man is alleged to have murdered his de facto wife and also wounding his 14-year-old stepdaughter, who is now admitted at the Lautoka Hospital in critical condition. Police say the man struck the two with a knife. Philippe Nicasso has the details. The incident has left many in this neighborhood scarred, as just a few days ago, the mother and daughter were seen around the area. If you ask about my reaction and what happened to me, it is as if uh, electricity has run through my body. Because uh, just a few months ago, I have been known to this family very well. The advisory counselor says that a day before the incident, the 49-year-old victim had contacted him. Tuesday night, 11, 11, 12 p.m., 11, 12 past 11 p.m., she made a call to me. I just answered the call in a second, and she whispered, she whispered that somebody is in his compound. Because how I assume, I can tell that she whispered that. At the same time, I just replied her, text me, because can't get it, eh, clear. So she's, within a second she texts me, come quickly, then I know, oh, Sudita, in problem. FBC News understands a domestic violence restraining order was filed against the suspect by the partner a few days ago. The community of Kambisi is still in shock following the horrific murder that happened yesterday, as for the first time ever, these residents have come across such incident in this quiet place. At around 6 a.m. yesterday, we came past the house and saw the mother and daughter lying close to a mango tree. The mother was crying for help, so we decided to rush them to the hospital. The man is in police custody in Singotoka, while the girl remains admitted at the Lotoka Hospital. The police investigation continues. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. The global pandemic has been described as the job killer by Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama, noting that 115,000 Fijians have either lost their jobs or are working reduced hours. Mbaini Marama highlighted the economic challenges faced by the small island developing states at the International Labour Organization's Global Virtual Summit on COVID-19. Pranita Prakash reports the majority of these countries are in crisis as their tourism, trade and supply chains are disrupted. While Fiji has no COVID cases outside of its quarantine facilities, the burden that Fijians are carrying on their backs has not shifted an inch. The floors of many factories are still quiet. With borders are shut around the world, Fijian tourism has come to a halt. Many jobs have still not returned. Some may never. In total, 115,000 Fijians, one third of our workforce, have had their jobs lost or hours cut. These are people who are trying to make ends meet um, by other means. So accessing the FNPF is uh, probably um, great for them, but it's also a sh uh, short-term um, solution for them as well. Prime Minister Borenge Baini Marama says he has met many of the employees and listened to their stories behind the staggering statistics. He says we need resources and not regulations better suited to larger labor markets. Let's find opportunity in this crisis by recognizing how the ILO can better support employers and employees who rely on the stalwarts of small island economies like tourism 
and target support accordingly. He adds that government has also created a new category of unemployment benefits to aid employees whose incomes have evaporated or hours have been slashed due to the effects of the pandemic. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Fiji police force believes cases of assault and theft will decrease in Dawasamu Tai level in the near future. This follows the opening of the refurbished Dawasamu community post by Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama this morning. In his address, Mbaini Marama assured the people of Dawasamu that the government will continue to prioritize the safety and well-being of Fijians from all forms of criminal activity during this time of uncertainty. Chasaina Nunga reports. <laughs> The Prime Minister urged the members of the district to cooperate with the four officers in charge of manning this newly refurbished police post. Policing is important work and we as a people show how important it is by building police facilities that are strong, modern and functional. The condition of our police facilities is a reflection on us as a society of the value we place on work we call on our police to do. The initial community post, which was built in 1998, was severely damaged by T.C. Winston in 2016. Bainam Rama says the new structure complies with the National Building Code, which can withstand any form of disaster. It is critical because the community needs this police. It uh, needs this police during normal times and especially during times of hardship. If the police can live with security, they can serve our communities. And if their headquarters are destroyed, they can serve the community. The Eastern Divisional Police Commander, SSP William Sobale, who says the refurbishment of this community post is part of the forces plan in this financial year to safeguard the nine villages on the Tikina of Ndawasamo. Given the fact of domestic and international investors in our area of responsibility, the officers are maximizing the resources we are blessed with to improve and serve the community better. SSP Sovalevo assures the community post will offer a wide range of service, both proactive as well as reactive, to derive peace and stability among communities. Chosai Nanunga, FBC News. The health minister has clarified that those returning from overseas who have been released from quarantine pose no risk to the community at large. Dr. Ifiremi Wangai Nambete says due to a high number of Fijians returning home, the ministry has had to replicate quarantine settings elsewhere to ensure all quarantine requirements are met. Koroi Tandulalo reports. When queried by FBC News about a Fiji Sun report of a couple who returned from Auckland, New Zealand and were released from quarantine six days short of their mandatory period, Dr. Wanga Nambete clarified the couple had completed their 14-day quarantine and were tested negative before being released. We initially used one, one designated facility, then we ran out of room, then we used another designated facility. We had to move... Um, uh, Fijians that had arrived in from that facility into another facility. Just because we are moving them doesn't mean that that's exempted. What it means is that we are then designating another place as a quarantine facility. So no one is exempted from quarantine. I think that's the most important thing to understand. Dr. Wanga Nebete adds they had to move some people from a quarantine facility to be tested for COVID-19. Remember there are some people that are returning, they're also very sick. So sometimes it's very difficult to look after them in a room. So we replicate quarantine uh, circumstances and strategies in another city. But everyone has to meet the quarantine requirement. The health minister reiterates that under no circumstance will they release anyone from quarantine before completing their mandatory 14-day period. He adds everyone needs to meet the requirement in place. Koritandulala, FBC News. Strangers are not a risk anymore when it comes to child abuse, a sentiment highlighted by Minister for Women and Children, Marisani Vuniwanga, when speaking with the students of the Seventh-day Adventist Primary School in Suvavo yesterday. While handing over library books and sewing machines to the school, Vuniwanga said the slogan, Don't Talk to Strangers, does not ring true anymore. Sanya Nimboila has more. Recent statistics shows that abuse is happening in places where children place their trust. The slogan, don't talk to strangers, that used to be the slogan, it's not anymore. When we're looking at the circumstances surrounding child abuse in our country now, 
it's more likely that it's somebody that the child knows. Many of these abuse cases are happening inside the children's home, school or church, places regarded safe. Bunyiwanga says this can only be resolved if everyone works together. I would like to have a conversation with the executives on how we can partner, form a strong partnership in this regards, to see how we can help each other out. SDA primary school manager Daniel Tofanga says the visit from the Ministry of Children was timely. Uh, visiting us to uh, donate uh, library books and also a, a, a sewing machine. Um, as you know, uh, a school library uh, is the heart of the school. And of course, it will you know, greatly uh, benefit uh, the students here. The SDA primary school has 723 students, where 284 are non adventist Saini Animboila, FBC News. Up ahead, beware of scammers, warns consumer watchdog. An annual recertification for social welfare suggested. My name is Shibu, I live in Tava Town, and I love listening to Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM, it's hot. My name is Karthik Abdestan, Aura Bami, Mirchi FM, it's hot. Namaskar, I'm Ali Mu, Lambasa, I always Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. Increase in internet usage and people's desperate need to get rich quickly has made it easy and faster for fraudsters to target a wider range of people. The Consumer Council has revealed that scammers and fraudsters are taking advantage of the pandemic and targeting Fijians by providing deceptive business opportunities. Chief Executive Seema Shandil says people behind these sorts of well-marketed scams are constantly coming up with new ways to target the vulnerable group, whether by post, email or other social media sites. She says they've received several complaints regarding this. After the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, we saw a rise in the number of scammers, you know. They were using different forms of scams to uh, con people and get uh, you know, uh, money out of them. The Social Welfare Department has been facing challenges in terms of getting recipients' accounts updated as there have been reports of fraudulent acts, with reports indicating many undeserving people are benefiting from the social welfare programs. The ministry has taken steps to rectify this. Venina Rakautonga with this report. The recertification process will now be done annually. Yes, we are looking at uh, every year to conduct this exercise. Because, you know, every year within the year, you know, there's a lot of changes that happen. And so it's good to update our information annually. Department Director Rupeni Fatiaki says they are hoping to install an IT system to make the work easier for their offices. One of the things that we are working with and the reforms that are coming is to have an IT system. And that would help us a lot uh, where we don't depend on men. At the moment, most of the work that are done is done manually by offices. The public, while welcoming the department's move, say those found guilty should be punished. It is good that the social welfare is doing this initiative for us, and it is a good move by them. There should be heavy penalty given to those who cheat the process because there are other people like us who deserve to get the assistance. It is a good move because some just take the money for the sake of it, although they don't need the help. To date, about 70% of recipients have submitted their applications. The Social Welfare Department is hoping to get the remaining 30% by tomorrow. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. The Sai Prema Foundation Fiji has gained the support of the United Nations Development Program Pacific Office. Both will now work together to identify and address the need to promote healthy living and well-being. Apenesa Wangai Rundovu reports an agreement has been signed that will recognize the relevant sustainable development goals in accordance with Sai Prema Foundation's projects and initiatives. The UNDP Pacific Office says their role in the new partnership will be to further expand the ongoing programs of the Cyprema Foundation and provide them the technical support needed. What we share with this foundation is that uh, the, the care for people, 
and we come with different perspectives in that and different assets and different capabilities. Bose says the partnership will encourage growth that truly leaves nobody behind. The Sai Prama Foundation, they're focusing on health of especially children. And ours is more broad because we are a development agency, which ultimately is really about the livelihoods and lives of people. Sai Prama Foundation Director Sumit Tapu says they've waited for this day to work alongside an organization intent on achieving a common goal. We actually didn't, didn't know that, uh, you know, there'll come such a day when we'll be so privileged to be sitting in your office and collaborating with uh, a global organization. One of the areas the UNDP will immediately look into will be to help develop an online medical record system for more effective treatment of patients. They also want to expand the foundation's national feeding project for the poor and needy. FBC News. The Ministry of Health today received $500,000 worth of medical equipment to assist in combating the spread of COVID-19. The government of Japan handed over thermal scanner systems, emergency trolleys, hand sanitizers, infrared thermometers and other medical kits too. Health Minister Dr. Firemi Wangainambete, while receiving the donation, says with no end in sight for COVID-19, Fiji will continue to closely work with its partners to ensure we are protected. What we have learned with this coronavirus pandemic is that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So donations such as today we've got personal protective equipment and sanitizer, um, thermometers. These, this is support we will need over the long term. What we've been talking about is how we model or how we re-engineer our business processes from a hospital and health system based uh, capability given the fact that we are not only faced with the burden of COVID-19, but also that uh, health needs to be at the forefront of the discussions uh, going forward. And now to Australia. Experts are warning the coronavirus could spread past the Australian state of Victoria with 165 new cases there today. New South Wales and now Queensland have closed their borders to Victorians, fearing officials will fail to contain the spread. And Whitney is here now with the latest in the business world. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, Carver Store goes cashless. And government reforms benefit investors. Stay with us. Radio <laughs> Fiji One. Mastercover has become the first roadside vendor to use Vodafone QR payment system. Managing Director Joeli Tukana says Mastercover is a family business that started in 2015 and have three roadside shops. Tukana says going cashless will reduce security risks for his business and will give his customers a convenient paying option. As part of its expansion, Mastercover has also launched its official Facebook page where customers will be able to order cover and have it delivered to their doorstep. Tukana says it is important for businesses to be able to adapt to the changing world where online shopping is becoming the most convenient way of doing business. Men's clothier Brooks Brothers has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, joining a long list of retailers including Neyman Marcus that have crumbled under the impact of the coronavirus crisis. Gary from HFC Bank joins us with the latest from the money market. A bright spot for New Zealand as their business outlook data for July saw further increases across the forward-looking activity indicators. New Zealand business confidence rose 4.6 points and the near-term employment picture improved, although deflationary pressures remain evident. While the domestic fundamentals are brighter, the Kiwi might take a hit as New Zealand's largest customer, Australia, is struggling to tame the coronavirus resurgence. 
In the U.S., Federal Reserve officials raised fresh concerns about the durability of the U.S. recovery. Some said the pace of the economic recovery may be stalling as the physical, as the physical payments come to an end this month, while COVID-19 cases surged to record levels. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, the governor of the Bank of Japan noted that the central bank won't hesitate to ease its monetary policy further if needed. He stated that the economy is in an extremely severe state and is likely to remain that way for some time. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Inaka. Turning to today's exchange rates, as said this morning, once again, the money markets are mixed. The Sangamoli rose against the Chinese yuan, the U.S. greenback, and the Japanese yen, but showed a decline against the other currencies we cover. On the commodities market, prices were again on the rise. Crude oil prices crept higher, but still just under the $41 a barrel. Gold was upsetting a new high at $1,809 per ounce, and silver closed up at $1,817 an ounce. Several reforms are being carried out by the government to redirect its focus on marketing Fiji as a destination for targeted investment. Trade and Tourism Minister Fayaz Koya highlighted this during the reopening of Total's re renovated service station in Lotoka today. The Trade Minister says due to the impact of COVID-19, some businesses have either closed or put up investment plans on hold. He says it is encouraging to see Total continuing to invest in its brand and its people. He says this project is part of Total's 8 million investment package that they plan to roll out over the next few months. This investment, ladies and gentlemen, is very timely, given that the Fiji government is currently undertaking a number of reforms which includes a review of our current Foreign Investment Act. And the new Investment Act will, uh, once in place, will allow for streamlining of a number of processes and eliminate the difference between domestic and foreign investors and accord internationally recognized rights, such as the most favored nation and, and the national treatment. That's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney, and good evening. Up ahead, more sports uh, given green light. And more work needed for Nandi and Latoka. This and more coming up. I'm Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Fiji 2. Pir Har mein Radio PG2 hamesha sunta hu, jo Radio PG2 desh ka dhar kar. Mera naam Chandra hai, main Raketi se baat karti hu. Ab ke Ram Ram, ab mujhe Radio PG2 bahut pasand hai. Radio PG2 desh ki dhar kar. Fourteen more sports can now begin their respective competitions after being accredited by government through the National Sports Commission. These include volleyball, basketball, swimming and athletics, amongst others. As Tali Matarukula reports, this brings the total number of accredited sports to 25, with eight yet to be certified. Getting accredited is only the first step towards having safer sport in the country. This is only the beginning. You are now responsible to please go out and train all of your athletes, your technical officials, and all those people, all the clubs. Any club in Fiji that's affiliated to your sporting body, you are responsible for. Sporting organizations found not to be complying with the new norms will be stopped from holding any form of competition. We want the competition going, we have to comply to the protocols. We don't want a repeat again of something that, you know, go back to square one. Sports Commission Chair Peter Mazi says the accreditation is the only certified document that will allow for international competitions. With New Zealand, it's a totally different ball game because of these. And, you know, you'll hear all the rumours about the rugby, what's going on, and, and um, the changes in Super Rugby and Fiji being invited. The invitations are actually going out to other sporting bodies too because we've already had discussions with Netball Fiji New Zealand 
Badminton, surfing, super marathon, weightlifting, baseball and softball, netball, table tennis, archery, amateur boxing and futsal were among the 13 sports accredited today. Talimatir Kula, FBC Sports. Following the induction of 30 players in the Fiji Rugby Union High Performance Women's Academy yesterday, the coaches, players and union have set their targets. The historical journey that started yesterday is just the beginning of a tough journey to the Fijiana's Maiden World Cup next year. Akula Dama with more. Elite player pathway manager William Ngandolo says the academy's program at the moment underpins women's preparations heading into the World Cup in New Zealand. This program, like the, the men's academy, is uh, to assist the coaches uh, or the coaching staff for the Fijiana team with players in the academy uh, preparation for, for the World Cup next year. The first Fiji Rugby Women's Academy is expected to broaden the horizons of these players. We're looking forward to, uh, to the program as it unfolds in the next couple of weeks. Um, and we hope that uh, you know, the girls are able to optimize their talents through this uh, program. This exciting pathway will surely give some aspiring players something to seriously think about. The important thing is the board's vision is that we might, we must create opportunities that will allow uh, a young girl to see rugby as a preferred sport. Eh? 30 players are part of the Women's Academy with 23 elites and 7 apprentices. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Tailevu rugby side is set to welcome back one of their young stars who has been part of the Brisbane Broncos setup for the last two years. Former Fiji 7 squad member and 2018 national under 20 rep, Ilikana Vundongo, has been training with the Thai Levu squad that's preparing for the Skipper Cup competition later this year. Caroline Tavi has more. If the Broncos give Ilikana Vundongo the go ahead to play in the Skipper Cup, then the Thai Levu team will have to match the standard of overseas professionals. Because of the pandemic, uh, COVID 19, a lot of overseas based are still here in Fiji. So when we have the, um, the competition on the 25th, come the 25th, most of these talented players who are um, based overseas will be playing in the local uh, domestic competition. So the boys, like uh, the Tailevu boys, they will be trying to match up right, with these overseas based players. The Tailevu side will be looking to improve on its kicking game before its first match. Well, last year what uh, let us down was our goal kicking. Right. We, were, uh, we managed to stay on top because of the tries that we scored. We scored, we scored in al almost every game. But it was the, the goal kicking that uh, let us down. Assistant manager Sakeasi Salambamba says the aim for Thai level is to win top prizes in domestic competitions. Uh, that's our, our goal. Our goal for this year, for the Skipper Cup and the Fair Brother. Just because the level team is a, a known team in yesterday years. Eh? So we are targeting the top prize in rugby this year. The Thai level rugby team will be banking on their local players as they prepare for the Skipper Cup clash against Namosi on the 25th of this month. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Australian and Pacific greats have backed Kiwi calls for Super Rugby to become a trans-Tasman competition with the addition of a team from the islands. News Hub revealed on Tuesday the proposed format is one of the key recommendations in the draft Aratipu report, which could finally see the Pacific involved in the competition. Both Nandi and Lautoko football admit they need to dust off the cobwebs after three months away from the game. Having played out a two-all draw in a warm-up match at Prince Charles Park last night, both coaches acknowledge they have a bit of work to do before their seasons resume. Philippe Naikaso reports. It was definitely an important warm-up match for Lotoka as it helped the side identify issues that needs to be ironed out before the season starts. And this is our first game after a long break, eh? so we still uh, we are trying to build up our combinations uh, with some of the new inclusions and uh, some of the players has also left, so we are trying to build some combinations. We are just testing our players. Eh? The Blues last lifted the season title in 2018 and they want to change this this season. We are working on the fitness too, but yeah, we will be ready for the next game against uh, Ba. Meanwhile, the Nandi football coach was happy with the side's performance. 
actually, if you look at the goals uh, that uh, Lotaka scored, I think we gave them the goals. And uh, silly mistakes, but the goals that we scored, we, we created it, which is a positive sign. This was also Nandi's third warm up match, the other two being with Suva. Nandi has always been a place where people support a lot. And that is a good sign and we hope they will continue supporting and they must have patience. So Toka will open its VPL campaign against Ba next Wednesday while Nandi takes on Lombasa next Saturday. Philippe and I, Caso, FBC Sports. Manchester City returned to winning ways and style by thrashing hapless Newcastle 5-0 this morning. With four games remaining, City have strengthened their claim to second place moving nine points clear of Chelsea, while Newcastle dropped the 13th. In today's Play of the Day, we take a look back at a brilliant solo try scored by the master himself, Jerry Tuwai, on the World 7 Series. A recent post online by World Rugby describes what you will see next as containing obscene footwork, and we couldn't agree more. Tuwai. To the line, two wide through the gap. Sweeper comes across. Jerry takes him on. Throws out the big fin. Oh! Sublime. He is unbelievable. Jerry Tuai had no right to score that try, and he's bamboozled half of France. But it come as you said, Willie, from the mistake from kickoff time. He's the one on the ball. Goes through. Sees his two forwards. And that's the mistake France do. Goes off the last defender. You know what? I'm out of here, says Jerry Tuai. Jerry Tuai is too much. That's it from Sports Tonight. In Weird and Wonderful later on, check out a new technology that harnesses energy from shadows. Find out more after the break. I'm from Navindam. We love listening to the FM. My name is Koto. I'm from Navirana. I love to the FM because of latest hit music and to the FM rocks. My name is Sulweti. I'm from Navirana. Today FM rocks. <laughs> Critica joins you now with the latest in weather. The low pressure truck to the north of Vanuwalevu brought cloudy skies and wet weather to much of Fiji today. In the west, skies were generally overcast, but there were no reports of rain. Eastwards from Peck Harbor to Suva, there were frequent light showers during the day under overcast skies. And up north, once again, cloudy skies and scattered showers. At sea, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the high tide at 10.11 tonight, followed by low tide at 4.07 tomorrow morning. Sunrise at 6.39 in the morning, of course. For tomorrow, while the low pressure trough is gradually moving away from Fiji, expect the cloudy skies and showers to continue with a chance of clearing late in the day. Tomorrow's temperatures will be warmest in the west, but generally in the 26 to 28 degree range across PG. Looking further on to Saturday, while there will be a chance of showers in the east and north, conditions in Ba should be fine for live coverage of the VPL match between Ba and Navwa to be carried out on the Walesi platform. That's the weather for now. Back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Kritika. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, are you excited to watch the Vodafone Premier League matches live on free-to-air channel for the first time? It's better for the people not staying within that uh, commentary booth. And disadvantage will be the people from the host will never come and play and get watch the game. So it will be a loss to the host. Good, we can watch uh, pressing at home now. Well, I think it will be nice and uh, people will be able to enjoy by sitting, uh, sitting at home at their place and uh, it will be good for all the people. Eh? It will be very good the first time we were watching in their life. 
Recapping the main stories for tonight, alleged murder leaves Kambisi residents in shock. COVID-19, a job killer, says PM. And no threat from those who clear quarantine. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, are you happy with the resumption of schools? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, Fiji has the most spectacular sunsets in the entire world that attracts thousands of visitors to our shores annually. And this sunset was captured by Kishore Maneklal from Savasabu. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, stay safe. Bye for now. Bula FM, Nambandua and a Siri.